Okay, hi all. Welcome to the Mladenomics, Mladenomics economy. And I just want to start off to say that over the past couple of year or so, I haven't been doing a lot of reading. Have not. I do a lot of Googling, a ton of Googling. I do a lot of chatting with AI, which for Go is the topic of this video. So I, I talk with AI. I speak with Google, with search engines, uh, with financial markets, with financial statistics and resources, medical facts, uh, history, uh, pop culture, uh, news articles, Twitter articles, uh, quotes from celebrities, uh, recent events, past events, history. So I do a lot of non non fantasy, like nonfiction, googling and researching and uh, and learning. But I haven't been reading a lot of books, like just a fantasy book. Because I took a peek at my shelf and I've seen a lot of great fantasy works that I miss. Or just, you know, uh, self-help books, business, money, philosophy, personal well-being. That I haven't really been... Because uh, what I used to do is I used to take a walk about a kilometer and a half to Indigo Bookstore, the big bookstore. And I would just inspect the titles. If they were expensive, I'd buy them on Amazon. Otherwise, if I didn't want to wait, I'd just buy them from Indigo right there. And I haven't been in, in about five years. So I really want to go and take a look at the, the new titles. All sorts of books. Books are really get lost in them and I crave them you know I crave a good book about anything it could be like I've seen books about the most mundane side spin-off characters from superheroes just the character that's not the main character the sidekick and there's a full $60 graphic novel about that character and I wanted to buy it I've seen pretty Pettiful books on relationship advice and like online dating, but I still wanted to read it. I've seen dozens of books on poker and gambling and casino games, and I wanted to read those too. So I've read most of the books on my shelf. I got some more autobiographies that I could read through. Uh, that's really all that's left. I got some. Yeah, there's a few like business books and the science books, um, cryptocurrency books that I have not read. But other than that, it's just the big older names, like the names that were around when when I was younger. That's when I bought these books. And that's when they were living their prime lifetimes that they're writing about today. So I got those, but what's really new out there, you know? I wonder. I wonder. <sighs> yeah. Really need a book. I need to go to the bookstore. And the thing is, this bookstore is connected to the VIP cinema. And it's the best cinema. It's a really magical cinema. So what you can go is you can go early, go to the bookstore, and then go to the movies. And then there's a really special restaurants right inside the Cineplex, inside the the mall. There's really nice restaurants and there's a grocery store as well. So you can get groceries, you can get snacks, you can go to fine dining, 
You can watch the sports games at the bar. You can go to the cinema. You can go to the bookstore. Yeah. Yeah. But since what I've been doing instead is a lot of Googling and speaking to AI, let me make this a little instructional video on what I've learned and how I go about learning new things in the context of the realms of the internet, the World Wide Web, facts that you may need to double check and resources that are not completely accurate but can still serve some sort of purpose, and the new emergence of AI. So. Let's discuss those in this video because that's what I've been doing for the past five years. But books are really wonderful, really wonderful books. So when um, Google has been around, but what's new and interesting about Google is now we all have Google at a high speed pretty much anywhere that we go in our daily lives at the tip palm of our hands and our cell phones. We can all connect to Google and we've got a lot of free apps giving us news, giving us Twitter, Twitter tweets, giving us... Uh, Relevant pop culture events, entertainment, and news. Uh, we can we can we can check Wikipedia. It's still around, still exists. Uh, we can even check scientific data, scientific articles, and and we got medical facts on a whole bunch of studies and drugs and uh, side effects, symptoms, diseases, problems in our lives, problems in just facts so the the wonderful thing about now is uh like when i was in university i never carried a laptop to school and the phones we had were a blackberry and the blackberry was useless especially it was so slow uh so even email didn't work but now we can send an email we can download apps we can uh we can we can check Google and then on Google we have AI and most of this stuff is relatively free there are premium packages but for 99% of the things you want to use it for they're free so make good use of it uh, just the difference between an AI and a human is the consciousness. And what consciousness means is a deeper understanding. So not taking things at face value. And so far that's the difference between machines and humans. Is machines can't go deeper than face value. A machine at Microsoft can have a trillion different nano chips and it can sort through gazillions of data and come up with patterns and statistics and outcomes and possibilities. But it can't deconstruct what it's seen into logical opinions. It can play probabilities and outcomes and odds, but it can't form a hypothesis because it can't take what it learns, what it analyzes, go down a level, have a cause and effect purpose, go down another level, have an outcome to that, go down another level, having effects of that outcome and implications of that and go down another level and then summarize all that. Whereas we humans, once we get certain data, we go, uh-huh, 
how does that connect to this? And then we make a connection. And then we ask for new information, new data. And then we get a graph. And then we say, how does this impact something new, a, a bigger problem? And then we do extra research and data mining. And then we have alternative solutions. But an AI can't do that. That's why when an AI plays chess, it just plays the best move possible. Whereas I play the best game possible. I play the best outcome, which means my move one, two, and three are low impact moves. But I'm setting myself up for move five to 10. By move 10, I will have established my army and position on the board and some sort of strategy where I've taken advantage of a specific area of the field, the battlefield, the chessboard. Whereas AI will never do that. You'll never see an AI come up with the most creative solution where it wrangled this side of the queen side structure and then marched with these pawns in unison to completely baffle the king side attack. It won't do that. It's going to have a bishop here and a knight here and a queen fork here and a rook here and a castle here and a pawn there. It's just going to make the, it's going to surf through billions of solutions and pick the best offensive move and it's going to play that move. Wherever it sees a flaw in your defense, that's where it's going to attack. It's going to be mindless machine work, devoid of beauty and thinking and deeper understanding because it can't think ahead 10 moves based on what the opponent is doing, based on what its internal judgment is of the situation and how it's going to formulate a cohesive attack. It can't do that. Maybe one day machines will be able to do that. And then they will have their own reasoning and consciousness. Can that ever happen? I don't know. I don't know. If I were to code AI, would I be able to kickstart the research into developing that consciousness? Then you could say, like, you could give it three facts. You could say the blood system works like this. Uh, autoimmune deficiency drugs work like this. And autoimmune deficiency diseases work like this. Develop something with the blood system, drugs, and the autoimmune diseases to cure this disease that works like this. And then it can come up with a reasoning, do its own research, do its own possible outcomes, and then direct us into theories of of investigation but it can't do that all i can say is this is what the drugs are this is what diseases are this is what uh areas of research are this is what mechanisms are this is what science and biology is it can't go deeper and deeper into new levels which is what even if you're not using ai even when i'm using just my google or my calculator, or my reading articles and connecting dots and just surfing the web. That's what I'm, in fact, doing. I'm going deeper and deeper and deeper. I'm going, where does this point to? Where does that point to? Where does that point to? Where does that point to? And making connections. And that's how you form a hypothesis. That's how you get good grades in school. Your, your essay is never going to be good if you just say, oh, I researched the best hockey player is so-and-so. Why is he the best hockey player? What did he do over the last 10 years? How was he brought up as a child? What did he do morally good contributions to society? How was his teamwork? What did other people say about him? How did he act in crucial games? Was there any impacts where he had to overcome adversity? You know, do all these different layers of research rather than just saying, oh, I found out he had the most wins and therefore he's the best player. You got to go deeper and connect more hypotheses.
uh, that's about it. Uh, that's what I've been doing. And yeah, like I, I, I connect financials and markets when I, when companies are involved or when I want to compare two companies, especially within the same industry. Like I want to compare why is not because I'm investing in either one of them, but just out of my curiosity, I want to see why is this company bigger than this one? Are they more greedy? What's their culture like? Who's their target audience? What role in capitalism do they play? Are they the big fat cat or are they some sort of uh, intellectual cause to advance something in society. So that's what I do when I look at companies and I research their revenue, their financials, their stock market, because I have a, a background history in stocks and finances. So I can use my skills that I learned from there to help me swim in the waters of Uh, analyzing <laughs> markets and companies and corporations and CEOs and people and managers and leaders and directors and yeah but uh, what I don't do is well, I don't I don't learn that much outside of the scope of my own investigative pursuits I don't watch interviews i don't read books like i'll ask ai when i need to learn about i've been learning about science but it's just with ai i just learned so much from ai but it's not a textbook i don't solve problems and equations and that you would get from a book i did that in university and then sometimes i miss just being at peace and reading a book like I I purchased one book recently on ebook and I went through it in about half an hour. Uh nonfiction book just on self help. Because I understand the topic and I know how to get the data that is unknown to me and learn about it quickly. So I guess if I did buy books, I would go through them a lot quicker. I would be like scan reading. If interesting case studies were discussed or interesting research groups were talked about, written about, I would uh, maybe read a couple of interesting articles. But other than that, I would just read about uh, the high level and resulting statements about the core concepts the book is outlining. Maybe I could do that with the books I have. Maybe I could do that with the books I currently have. But those days of just going to the bookstore and uh, browsing the, the library of all the new books and but I mean if I do buy them and read them I'm gonna read them quickly I'm not gonna read it word for word hmm. and then like I've tried reading I also have about a dozen or more fiction, fantasy books in my library that I, I were big titles that I liked since I was a teenager. And I've started reading them on ebook, but I lose interest. So I, I, I try reading the big names as well, like Game of Thrones and... Um, the the eye of the world the the wheel of time and lord of the rings i've read already um 
Anyways, uh, keep reading, keep surfing through data. And then as you're doing your research, it's nice to keep documentation of organized files on the computer or in a notebook of what you've learned. So you can use it for later. If you need to to write something or create a new hypothesis based on what your own experience and what you've learned, you can go through these documents of relevant organized information that you that are true. And you can then create a new data and sheets of, or you can just read up and from time to time about very important things you've learned from statistics and books and stuff like that. And you can rank things, you can make lists, you can make spreadsheets, you can make dollar financials, accounting principles. It doesn't have to be an essay. You can make, uh, you can deduce all sorts of conclusions from organizing your work. Maybe just filing it and organizing it in. And, and looking back on it from time to time. And then you're also more interesting as a conversation with people because you have real world wisdom. Yeah. But so the main question is, will AI develop its own consciousness or will we humans need to sift through deeper levels of cause and effect results to form our own way of thinking and conclusions and how will we go about preserving knowledge and expanding on knowledge and teaching knowledge to others. So learn have fun, play some games. Experiment with, with your own research, surfing the net and uh, Googling stuff and using free AI tools and uh, investigative learning and just uh, gain a deeper understanding as always stay classy in New York